Hey babe. And anybody else watching and welcome back to A Life Together. Today we are looking at 24, 25, and 26 of First Chronicles. Yesterday uh, we looked at David counting his military, the consequences of his military census. Uh, we looked at temple preparation and then also a look at some of the Levitical families. Now we're going to look more today at some of those families, but we'll also see um, specifically some of the priests, the singers, uh, we're going to be looking at gatekeepers, treasurers, uh, and then there's also some other officials. And we'll be talking a little bit about some of these roles and some of our roles as well, because uh, that, yeah, that's worth looking at. So again, 24, 25, and 26 today of First Chronicles. So chapter 24. These were the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father did. They had no sons, so Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests. With the help of Zadok, a descendant of Eleazar, and Ahimelech, a descendant of Ithamar, David separated them into divisions for their apportioned order of ministering. A large number of leaders were found among Eleazar's descendants than among Ithamar's, and they were divided accordingly. Sixteen heads of families from Eleazar's descendants and eight heads of families from Ithamar's descendants. They divided them impartially by drawing lots, for there were officials of the sanctuary and officials of God among the descendants of both Eleazar and Ithamar. The scribe Shemamiah, son of Nathaniel, a Levite, recorded their names in the presence of the king and of the officials, Zadok the priest, Ahimelech, son of Abathar, and the heads of families of the priests of the Levites, one family being taken from Eleazar and then one from Ithamar. The first lot fell to Jehoiarib, the second to Jedidiah, or Je Jediah, the third to Harim, the fourth Seorim, the fifth Malchijah, the sixth Mijamin, the seventh, Hakaz, the eighth, Abijah, the ninth, to Jeshua, the tenth, Shechaniah, the eleventh, Eliashib, the twelfth, Jakim, the thirteenth, to Hupa, the fourteenth, to Jashib, Jashbib, the fifteenth, to Bigla, the sixteenth, to Immer, the seventeenth, to Hezer, the eighteenth, to Hapaziz, the nineteenth, to Pethaiah, the twelfth, to Je Jehezkel, the twenty-first, to Jakin, the 22nd to Gamul, the 23rd to Delina, the 24th to Maziah. This was their appointed order in the ministering when they entered the temple of the Lord, according to the regulations prescribed for them by their forefather Aaron, as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded him. As for the rest of the descendants of Levi, from the sons of Amram, Shalubiel, from the sons of Shalubiel, Jediah, as for Rehabiah from his sons, Isha was the first. From the Israelites, Shalomoth. From the sons of Shalomoth, Jehath. From the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jahaziel the third, and Jachmiam the fourth. The son of Uziel, Micah. From the sons of Micah, Shemir. From the sons of Micah, Isaiah. Uh, From the sons of Isaiah, Zechariah. From the sons of Merari, Mahali, and Mushi. From the sons of Jeziah, Benno. From the sons of Merari, from, Jaza, from Jeziah, Benno, Shoham, Sachur, and Ibri. From Mahali, Eleazar, who had no sons. From Kish, the son of Kish, Jeramiel. And the sons of Mushi, Mahali, Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the Levites according to their families. They also cast lots, just as their brothers, the descendants of Aaron, did in the presence of King David, and of Zadok, Ahimelech, and the heads of families of the priests and of the Levites. The families of the oldest brother were treated the same as those of the youngest. Chapter 25. David, together with the commanders of the army, set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jedathan for the ministry of prophesying, accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. Here is the list of the men who performed this service. From the sons of Asaph, Zechur, Joseph, Nathaniah, and Asrila. The sons of Asaph were under the supervision of Asaph, who prophesied under the king's supervision. As for Jedathan, from his sons, Gedaliah, Zeri, Joshiah, Shimei, Hashabiah, and Mataniah, six in all, under the supervision of their father Jedathan, who prophesied using the harp in thanking and praising the Lord. As for Heman, from his sons, Bukiah, Mataniah, Uziel, Shubel, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hananai, Elphani, Elfan uh, Gedalti, and Romanti Ezer, Joshbikbasha, Mahoth, uh, Hother and Masayoth, 
all these were the sons human, of Heman, the king's overseer. They were given him through the promises of God to exalt him. God gave Heman four sons and three daughters. All these men were under the supervision of their fathers for the music of the temple of the Lord, with cymbals, lyres, and harps for the ministering at the house of God. Asaph, Jedathan, and Heman were under the supervision of the king, along with all their relatives, all of them trained and skilled in music for the Lord. They numbered 288, young and old alike, teacher as well as student, cast their lots for their duties. The first lot, which was for Asaph, fell to Joseph, his sons and relatives, twelve. The second to Gedaliah, his sons and relatives, twelve. Or, excuse me, he and his relatives and his sons, twelve. The third to Zachur, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fourth to Isri, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fifth to Nethaniah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The sixth, sixth to Bukiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The seventh to Jasrila, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eighth to Jeshiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The ninth to Mataniah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The tenth to Shimei, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eleventh to Azarel, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twelfth to Hashabiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The thirteenth to Shalubiel, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fourteenth to Mataniah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The fifteenth to Jeremoth, his sons and relatives, twelve. The sixteenth to Hananiah, his sons and relatives, twelve. The seventeenth to Josh Bikbatha, his sons and relatives, twelve. The eighteenth to Hanani, his sons and relatives, twelve. The nineteenth to Malothi, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twentieth to Eliatha, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-first to Hathir, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-second to Gedalti, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-third to Mahazioth, his sons and relatives, twelve. The twenty-fourth to Ramanti Ezer, his sons and relatives, twelve. Chapter 26. The Divisions of the Gatekeepers. From the Korathites, Meshelamiah, son of Korah, one of the sons of Asaph. Meshelamiah had sons, Zachariah the firstborn, Jadiel the second, Zebediah the third, Jothniel the fourth, Eliam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, and Ehelioni the seventh. Obed-Edom also had sons, Shemamiah the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sakar the fourth, Nethaniel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Peluthai the eighth, for God had blessed Obed-Edom. His son Shemamiah also had sons who were leaders in their fa father's family because they were very capable men. The sons of Shemamiah, Othni, Raphael, Obed, and Elizabeth. His relatives, Elihu and Semiah, were able men. All these were descendants of Obed-Edom, and they and their sons and relatives were, cap uh, were capable men with the strength to do the work descendants of Obed-Edom, 62 in all. Meshlemiah had sons and relatives who were able men, 18 in all. Hosha the Merite had sons, Shimri the first, although he was not the firstborn, his father had appointed him to be first. Hilkiah the second, Tabaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth, the sons and relatives of Hoshea, were 13 in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers through their chief men, had duties of ministering in the temple of the Lord, just as their relatives had. Lots were cast for each gate, according to their families, young and old alike. The lot cast for the east gate fell to Shemlemiah. Then, last were caught, then lots were cast for his son, Zechariah, a wise counselor, and the lot for the north gate fell to him. The lot for the south gate fell to Obed-Edom, and the lot for the storehouse fell to his sons. The lots for the west gate and the Shalakath gate on the upper road fell to Shupuim and Hosha. Guard was a long side guard. There were six Levites a day on the east and four a day on the north, four a day on the south, and two at a time at the storehouse. As for the court to the west, there was four at the road and two at the court itself. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers who were descendants of Korah and Merari. Their fellow Israelites were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God and the treasuries for the dedicated things. The descendants of Ladan, who were Gershonites through Ladan, and who wore heads of families, who were heads of families belonging to Ladan the Gershonite, were Jehalil, the sons of Jehali, Zetham, and his brother Joel. They were in charge of the treasuries of the temple of the Lord. From the Amramites, the Israelites, the Hebronites, and the Uzielites, 
uh, Shubael, the descendants of Gershom, son of Moses, was the officer in charge of the treasuries. His relatives, through Eleazar, Rehabiah, his son, Jashiah, his son, Joram, his son, Zikri, his son, and Shalometh, his son. Shalometh and his relatives were in charge of the treasuries for the things dedicated by King David, by the heads of families who were the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and by other army commanders. Some of the plunder taken in the battle dedicated for the repair of the temple of the Lord, and everything dedicated by Samuel the seer, and by Saul son of Kish, Abner son of Ner, and Joab son of Zeruiah, and for all the other dedicated things, were in the care of Shalomith and his relatives. From Israelites, Kenaniah and his sons were assigned duties away from the temple as officials and judges over Israel. From the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 able-bodied men, uh, were responsible in Israel west of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the king's service. As for the Hebronites, Jeriah was their chief according to the genealogical records of their families. In the 40th year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men among the Hebronites were found in Jazir in Gilead. Jeriah had 2,700 relatives who were able men and heads of families, and King David put them in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. I think it's it's interesting that we have these these delineated roles. I think that's it's not something we want to ignore. Seeing the worshippers, seeing what all of these people, these singers, we have again. I listed these out before: the treasurers, the other officials. We have singers, priests, um, and we have them listed by family. We have them listed by role. And I think again, it's really important that we don't ignore that. Now, yeah, our tribes don't look the exact same as the Israelites of old, but I think it's important to recognize that we we have a role in the body of Christ. And what that means is that means that I don't need to feel guilty if I am not filling in the exact same role that someone else is filling. Maybe I'm not gifted in that way. Maybe God has not allowed me those gifts, but he's given me other gifts to how I can spread his word, to how I can minister to his people, to people that haven't heard the word of God yet. Maybe someone is able to be on the mission field in great, great capacity, but they do not have the funds. Well, as their brother in Christ, hopefully I'm helping them out. I mean, help, help, hopefully, excuse me, that is something that God has put on my heart. Because if I am not as good with words or I stammer all the time, which I can probably attest to that being the case, then hopefully I am filling that role in helping out those who can do that better. Now, that doesn't alleviate me, alleviate me of my responsibility for ministering God's name in my sphere or trying to be a little bit more outgoing in that space. But that also doesn't mean that I need to try and shoehorn myself onto the worship team if I'm not good at singing and if I don't have a passion for it. I don't need to feel guilty for that. But I think that does mean that it's worth taking an assessment of where would God like me to serve? And maybe that's not where I'm comfortable right at the outset. Maybe that's something that God's laid on my heart and I'm called to get more comfortable in that space. But whatever the case is, it's definitely worth praying about. So let's do it. God, I thank you for the gifts that you have given your people, for the roles that you have us fill. Lord, give us the discernment to tell what that is, Lord. And if we are not sure what gifts we've been given or where you would have us fill in in ministering to your people and ministering to others, Lord, help us to pause and to assess and to ask you, Lord, remind us that we need you in this whole process, God. And we thank you so much for the example of your son and for the role that he set. God, give us a passion to do the same. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, that is about all I have for you today. As always, know I appreciate you. Wife, appreciate you tons. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.